What's up everybody, my name is Simon Hesse and I'm really pleased to guide you through this production inside video about the collaboration track that Zion and I made. It's called Journey and will be released on a slide of hand EP, which by the time you will see this video will be out on Sega Records. So a big shout out to all the Sega Records team, thank you for having us, thank you for believing in our music, we are really buzzing for this release and yeah, with that said, I would say let's dive right into the project, alright? So here we are inside Ableton. I would say we just start with the break and the main drop so you can get an idea of what the sound is all about of this track. So to start things off, I would just suggest to move away from top to bottom within all of the channels. Yeah, I would just start off with uh, this sidechain, you know, sense only channel, which is basically there just to have a trigger for every compressor that maybe needs a little bit of sidechaining. So let's uh, just to make a example here. If we want to make, uh, where's the compressor here? If we would like to put it on the backup, just an example, we can just click here, sidechain, input, sidechain kick, and then from here we can trigger, you know, out, RMS, set attack, release time, everything we need, and it's done. It's super simple, and for me, I just, I, I don't know why, but it's, I'm working like this. Zion uh, loves to work more with, I can show you really quick, with Autopan. You can basically emulate the same thing. The difference is that the signal won't be compressed when you do it with the Autopan. It's just the volume that's going up and down. So it really depends on the material. If you think that you need a little bit of more compression, then you can use a compressor, obviously. Uh, if you're more looking for a clean sound, maybe you can go for more with the auto pan. It really, really depends on, on the signal, how hard it is already compressed or not, which one to choose. So let's move on to the lows. What do we have here? We have a main kick, a groove and a transient. Let's play it all together. Our main kick is pretty simple. I think it came from Zion. It's a kick that he made for this track. We made a bunch of other tracks where I made the kicks first, so we kind of, you know, tried to make half and half of it. The transient, pretty simple, just to give it a little bit of uh, an edge on the kick on top. And the groove is basically the same kick, just playing a melody, really hard acute, and then well, 
uh, again with the sidechain auto pen trick. So next up, we build our high groups, you know, to get a rhythm going. And something like this. Bunch of shakers. Super simple offbeat open head. And some rides. Also here, nothing fancy. A little bit of a delay and EQ automation, depends of on the head. We all agreed that, or we too agree on the fact that we like to layer our heads. Not too many, but to give like every time you, you know, getting a unique main head, if you can say like that. And as you can see it here, sometimes we already in this stage remove some you know, unwanted frequencies. I can play it for you. Yeah, you can definitely hear it. Yeah, sounds much better. So from here on, we move to the FX section. Also pretty basic stuff, some crashes here and there that we basically you reuse through the track to give it some more, you know, consistency, not too often, but a little bit. You just some simple white noise, white noise build up, a clap FX with some delay. So it's it's nothing super special till now. Let's sound how the track sounds till now. It was Yeah, already with the synths on, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, so now we get to the main part where everything got a little bit tricky. As you can see, uh, I rendered out the main leads, which were in MIDI, to the stem, which basically was already. Because living with the distance, Zion lives like five or six hours away from where I live, so we had to send out the stems back and forth until we are happy with uh, you know the the audio and um, this was I think one of the first ideas that I had which then became the main thing around the track uh, I can show you also some stuff that we scrapped that we you know, add here as backup. It was the lead sound. Yeah, this was, I think, even the first idea before we, we made the other one. But we weren't really, you know, happy with the overall result of this melodic rhythms and stuff. And so we decided to keep it in the background. So in case we don't know and we can still go back and have like this inspiration. But at the end, we ended up with this like more rhythmic and repetitive sound, I would say. Obviously, there's a ton of effects on it. You can, uh, yeah, saturation with Isotope Trash. I really love it as a plugin. All right, let me show you. Just some basic little bit gentle tape saturation on it. Uh, some delays, compressor, sidechain compressor, uh, and a Q to roll off all the low end, an arpeggiator and a pitch, and some automations on it. To give all this character and movement throughout the track. Then 
we got the rolling lead, which was also a MIDI clip, then rendered out to this beautiful stem. Nothing fancy, just to, you know, have a moving but really steady element to keep, like, the energetic going forward within the track. Then we had some pads to just creating atmosphere and build-ups through all these different sections of the track. For this pads, I can't show you uh, the exact effects that were on it because this were coming from Zion himself. So he just sent me the stems, and yeah, sometimes it's just, <laughs> it's just like that. Uh, then we got a ton of base shots and stuffs to make some interesting, you know, just fill up some gaps. And also here already rendered out then as as audio clips then and but the MIDI files are already yeah are still there. So for this this shot was what just a simple you know with a pitch band as you can see and an auto filter again tape saturation on it sidechain compressor and a simple IQ on it. In context, it sounds like this. And some more basic shots. It's like this guitar sound. Yeah, as you can see, at this stage I still was, you know, cleaning up all these different audio tracks. This is also nice if you work with audio tracks that you can clean up all these little clicks and stuff. I, I didn't like it to be so long. I like to be shortened up. So to give like a different feeling and not it being the same sound every still, still drop, you know, of the note. Then uh, what we got next is a bass line that came also from Zion. Again, just to fill up some tracks. And, and you know, fill up the space in the background of the track. Uh, then we added this. To be honest, I think this was a serum sound that I sampled. Yeah, so basically it was just one simple note playing, but with uh, an LFO I gave like a redirection to the overall volume and some other parameters of serum. And basically got out this. So it was, if I remember right, I mean, if act. The problem is really that we had to send out stamps back and forth, and the project was really big. We had a lot of stuff with we didn't like and scrapped away, and so we had to delete a lot of stuff. Um, but the LFO was this one from. Max for life. So again, nothing special. We, we really work with basic things. And uh, you can change the rate, you can do some crazy stuff from sign. You can go to square, random. I think I got like random. Got a little bit of jitter on it and smooth it out. And then I map this one basically to the volume output of uh, the serum 
basic, like just a saw wave preset. Not even a preset, it's just I, I load up really a basic saw wave and it wasn't nothing more. I also added a second LFO to redirect the rate of the first one. So this was the basic idea behind it, and then uh, after I freezed out everything, um, I just cut it up and and got it into a rhythmic, you know, context so that it kind of fitted the track. Uh, as you can hear also, I gave it some auto pen and maybe some effect like EQ and and basic sidechain compressor and stuff. And the idea was to use it only for the intro, but then we also used it for the outro, as you can hear. And uh, together with the track, it sounded like this. As you can see, we loaded up uh, a few of sidechain compressors to, you know, make some space for the main elements, which are the bass shot, uh, the bass shot, the lead mail, and the the kick, obviously, because we really wanted to keep it in the background and not to give it a, like an upfront space. It really was to give it some kind of crunch, some kind of electronic futuristic feeling. I don't know, some kind of robotic style and yeah that was the idea behind it. And then just faded it out so that the main elements can come in and build up the track that we needed. So next up is a vocal that came from Sion. I don't know where he got it from. I think that it's from a sample pack or somewhere, but I'm not quite sure. I can't. I can't say. Next one, a really basic uh, snare, snare roll build up. As you can hear, we layered three snares. Give it some EQ, and then he added like his sunny snare boost side chain whatever effect chain and then an auto filter envelope to really bring it into the track Nothing fancy here again. Then this brake pads, which were just there to, you know, give the track some edge, especially in the brake and intro and outro. I think this came from Zen too. Yes, yeah, just one note to create some tension, especially in the brake, to give it some dark and you know asking feeling where you don't know what is happening sounds like it's something to start up this was the idea behind this yeah also pretty simple then just just the same like as a drop fx in the intro and outro I don't know where he got it from. I think it must be some of the Arturia collection plugins, something like that. Um, then, what I also really, really like to do is to add some own recorded field recordings to give the track more ambience, more atmosphere, and more depth. Well, 
point I, I can pull up the loudness so you can hear what it's actually actually doing oh, actually sorry for my English guys it is I think uh, it was at an airport in 2019 or at the workspace where I worked back like three or four years ago um, I usually tend to uh, use my Tascam DR40 mobile recorder to just record some random sounds, uh, leaves and whatnot, just uh, to fill up really the background of the track. Um, yeah, this is not uh, a thing that I don't know, I see a lot of guys doing, but big shout out to Spectre. I think he told it. At the masterclass, at the dance for masterclass, also a few couple of years ago, and yeah, I got this recorder basically to record my sets uh, and cut it together with the audio of the audience, and it uh, turned out to be a pretty handy production tool as well. This is yeah the first background for the second background. It was a recording too. But we tried to give it a little bit of turn and I added some delay, auto pen. As you can hear, I just used the sound. I think it was also at an airport or something like that. I like resampled a uh, single clip which I like would sound cool, which give it already like a rhythm. And this part was like, man, I don't know, at an airport or train station or something. Please proceed to an information test. Wait for hold. Attention, please. Ah, I think it was in Amsterdam or Barcelona, something like that. Uh, but basically, just reverse it, slap some FX on it, and yeah, we got this like cool sounding, I don't know, intro sound. Just also just to fill up the atmosphere, give like a strange, you know, kind of asking feeling. Like when you hear this, it's like I try to, you know, understand what is going on. It's like a strange atmosphere, but still at the same time captivating. So this was the idea behind it. And with that said, I think that's yeah, we are basically done. Alright guys, thank you very much for sticking around till the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you could learn something from it. If you do so, please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Sega Records will be going big, sure, in the future. With that said, see you guys and thank you for your support. Bye bye.